God's amazing and abundant grace be with each and every one of you this morning. Welcome to worship on this sacred Sunday as we gather our hearts, prepare to light the candle of love, and our choir will minister to us with an amazing anthem and brass a little later on in the service. For any visitors or guests, please know whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here and to participate as the Spirit so leads you. And we especially welcome anyone who's watching our live stream today. Know that you are most welcome, and we are glad you are here. For those who are watching the live stream, you can find the bulletin for today's service either on our website or you can click the link that's being posted to the comments section as I speak. A couple of announcements uh, for the good of the community today as we gather in. The first is that for those here in the sanctuary, in your bulletin was the poinsettia order form. Um, today is the last Sunday to order a poinsettia in honor or in memory of someone. Even if you happen to forget your checkbook or don't have cash, feel free to fill out the form and put it in the offering plate at the back. Uh, for those who are watching online, if you want to donate a poinsettia, please email the church office. We do need those by tomorrow so that we can complete everything before Christmas Eve. This week, there are several important services that I want to invite you to. The first is that Tuesday is the winter solstice, the longest night of the year. And so at 6.30 on Tuesday evening, we're going to gather on Zoom for a longest night uh, service. It's an opportunity for us to name and notice the places in our lives where we have felt uneasy and to also open our hearts for the light of Christ um, that we'll welcome and celebrate on Christmas Eve. So if you've been carrying some things over the last year and want to join with us at 6.30 on Zoom on the longest night, please just drop me an email and I'll get you the link. Then Christmas Eve, Friday evening, we offer three worship opportunities. The first is at 5 p.m. It'll be outside on the back part of the Oasis Center. You can either sit inside or outside of the Oasis Center. Um, we welcome special guest musicians, Betsy and Fernanda Traba, um, and they're Prelude music will begin at 4.45 p.m. The service begins right at 5 p.m. Bring a lawn chair if you want to sit outside. And um, I did check. Sunset on uh, Friday evening is at 5.43 p.m. So we'll sing Silent Night right as the sun is setting <laughs> at that service. It'll be a wonderful gathering. 8 p.m. We'll be here in the sanctuary that will also be the service that we live stream. We are uh, welcoming our guest musicians, Megan and Natalie, our two string players, along with our amazing choir preludes for that service and the live stream start at 7.45 p.m. And then 11 p.m. starts at 11 p.m. Uh, and that is our communion celebration service. Uh, and special music is all of us singing our beloved Christmas carols. Our collage brothers and sisters will be offering a fellowship time after the 8 p.m. service, or if you want to come a little bit before the 11 p.m. service. So we got your Friday night all planned, and uh, pray that you will join us to celebrate the birth of Christ, especially this year. Next Sunday, December 26th, the day after Christmas, we're going to have just one service. 11 a.m., it will be live streamed either here in the sanctuary, in person, or online. Uh, our Racial Justice Mission Group wants to invite you on January 6th. They're going to take the trolley tour of Newtown, uh, an opportunity for you to hear a bit about the history of our own community, what's right here in our own backyard. It's uh, from 10 to noon on uh, January the 6th. If you have questions about that, you can see myself or talk to Ellen Marcy. Uh, there is a small cost for it, but we don't want that to be a hindrance. If that's a problem, just let myself or Ellen know, and we'll make that happen. 
Also, on January 6th, that Thursday, I'm going to begin the next session of Mapping Your Life. For those who have been here before, this is something I, I tend to offer in January. As we're making all of our resolutions and we're kind of exploring, examining our life, these are intentional moments on Thursday afternoons from 4 to 5.30 when you might settle in and listen to the stories of your life. So if you're at all wondering what the new year might hold and want to begin 2022 with intentions and with prayer, Mapping Your Life is an opportunity for you. It is a hybrid experience, either in person in the Oasis Center or on Zoom. So you can talk to me a bit more if you have questions. But that will be every Thursday in January, of which there's four, um, starting on January the 6th. And then hopefully you noticed in the midweek message that the service to celebrate the life of Joyce Harmon will be on December 31st at 1.30 that will be Zoomed and recorded. Um, uh, and so if you need to Zoom in, let me know. I will uh, get you the link. Otherwise, here in person on the 31st. I want to invite Lynn Jones forward with an update from our Christmas love opportunity. Good morning. As we prepare this morning to light the candle of love, it seems only appropriate that we highlight one of our Christmas love recipients, Family Promise, which I believe truly demonstrates love of neighbor and love of children. For those of you unfamiliar with Family Promise, you should know that they are the leading national organization helping homeless families by providing shelter, meals, and support services with the ultimate goal of getting these families back on their feet and achieving dignity and independence. And by the way, they receive no government funding. For many years here in Sarasota, our congregation has been a leader in supporting Family Promise, along with some 20 other congregations. We have done this not only financially, but also by providing meals and acting as hosts when we were able to help house these families. But sadly, the recent pandemic has put much of that on hold for now. Yet Family Promise has adapted their services to remain relevant and immensely helpful. In the last year alone, in fact, Family Promise of Sarasota Manatee has served 130 families, including more than 355 children under the age of 18, providing provisions and resources that have helped them to stay in their homes or find new housing. And given that 60% of these families stated that they were directly impacted by COVID and the remainder by illness or loss of critical social services, Family Promise was certainly there when it was needed most during this pandemic. And they've recently rented and renovated a two bedroom house that is specifically designed to house pregnant and postpartum moms and their babies who need housing at that critical time. So, your generous gifts to our Christmas love offering will help Family Promise continue to support these deserving families. In addition, if you have an interest in helping by volunteering or collecting food and other necessary items, please let me, Lynn Jones, or Steve Combs, we are the two co-coordinators for our congregation, know. And let's show our love to these families in whatever way we can. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lynn. And if you need, uh, the envelopes are in the back for Christmas love. Several prayers to hold in our hearts as we worship this morning. First and foremost, uh, we want to honor that the two bouquets on either side of me are given in loving memory of Bob's, Bob Smith by Nidia Smith. Nidia, thank you for doing that today. And we do hold Bob's memory in our prayer. And then the what, the flowers in the middle are given in loving memory of Wally Beckstrom by his sister Vivian, uh, and we thank Vivian for that. Please hold uh, Ed Dupree and Wes Curry in your prayers who are recovering. Please continue to hold Jan Wood in your prayer. And we also want to pray for uh, Carl Denny's daughter, Debbie, who is in the hospital up in uh, Philadelphia as she recovers continue to hold family and friends of Joyce Harmon in our prayers. 
And of course, we continue to pray for the people in the Midwest whose homes and businesses and communities were devastated by the tornadoes last week. So with those prayers stirring in our hearts, let's open our whole lives to God's love that is found here in this very room. Twenty-two days ago, we set out on a familiar pathway toward a known destination. Twenty-two days ago, we set our hearts, souls, faces, and whole lives toward Bethlehem, to a dusty, dirty stable, where we long to encounter God's love in flesh, breath, and bone. We have sought to share this journey with others over the last weeks. And so I wonder, when? When did you feel a flame of hope 
burn brightly in your heart over the last 22 days? When did the candle of peace settle into your soul over the last few weeks? And with whom this last week did you share the candle of joy? As we see the stable on the horizon, our hearts fill with love, with God's love that enfolds and holds us, God's love found in every person. God's love incarnate in Christ and Christ in each of you. This is the good news we prepare our hearts to celebrate at the end of this week. Join your heart and voice with mine, please, in our unison opening prayer. God, you cannot be contained or confined by any words or buildings or fancy theological arguments. Yet you decide every year to come into our world in a way we can recognize and so our souls might realize their full worth. You come so that our hearts might resonate with your heart. You come full of life, love, breath, soul, spirit, laughter, tears, grace, and humanness. You come to show us life. Help us this week Hold gently the good news of great joy. You enter this world in the vulnerable form of a baby laid in a manger, in a stable visited only by lowly shepherds and wise ones from distant foreign lands. That one sentence takes a whole lifetime to explore. Your love is the light we need 
to guide us toward Christmas and the dawning of a new year. So we pause in the holiness and humanness of this moment to be in your presence, letting your love meet us where we are. Amen. And so we light the fourth and final candle of Advent that leads us to the stable where love's pure light is born. I believe that there are many, many moments that make this time of year so sacred. Each of us, I believe, has traditions that connect the past to the present and then point to the future. This can come in the form of cards or cookies, conversations or parties or humble connections. But for me, for me every year, I have to watch how the Grinch stole Christmas. There's that moment at the end when the Grinch's heart grows three sizes because he hears the people singing, and he decides to return all of the presents down to Whoville. Sorry, I I should have said spoiler alert there. (laughs) So this Christmas, I light the candle of love with the prayer that my heart would grow three sizes. I light the candle of love today with the prayer to shine and share the light of Christ every day in the dwindling of this year and throughout the dawning of the new year. Good morning, church. We conclude our Advent series on Isaiah's vision being our vision. Listen to how Isaiah imagines God's recreating the world around us and with us. Hear these words from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. 
They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Friends, please join with me in the spirit of prayer. Love divine, all loves excelling. Joy on heaven, joy of heaven on earth be found. Fix in us, fix in each of us thy humble dwelling. Let your hope, peace, and joy abound so that the meditations of our minds, the thoughts of our hearts, and the very stirrings of our spirit, O God, would be guided and grounded by your love this day and every day this week as we journey toward Bethlehem to greet the one laid away in a manger with anthem sweet. Alleluia and amen. Recently, my spiritual director encouraged me to pay attention to and and to even write down some of the questions I was carrying with me. And as I've engaged in that prayer practice over the last several weeks, I've, I've come to realize just how much uncertainty we are all swimming in. I've noticed how my questions have this wonderful range. They go from the seemingly small, even insignificant questions like, what's the weather outside and do I need a jacket? To what should I have for lunch or dinner? To what in the world did Gina buy for me for Christmas (laughs) that's there in the back bedroom underneath that blanket that I can't go in that room anymore for? (laughs) And then... Then there are these bigger questions I carry, like how exactly do you pastor during this continued pandemic? How do you lead when you're not exactly sure where you're going, or how do you parent as your kids become adults? I think every single one of us carries questions within us. And yet somewhere along the line, we get this sense. We we pick up a script that being an adult in this world means that we trade our questions in for answers. That adulting means that we have responses and replies to every question rather than just sitting in the beautiful marvel and mystery of them. And this is certainly true for pastors. It's part of an occupational hazard that oftentimes clergy tend to think of ourselves as super spiritual answer people. I'm going to pause for a moment while you imagine the costume and the cape super spiritual answer person wears. So when you, when you come with your great questions. There's there's a part of me that feels like I have to have a response. I have to have a reply. After all, I I went to seminary, right? When, When you come with those beautiful questions around why are humans so hateful toward each other? Or or why is there suffering and struggling in this world? Or or what exactly is the church gonna look like in 2022? questions each and every one of us carry, questions that are unique to us personally, questions that we share communally, collectively, as a country, as a world today, questions we carry. Recently, I I wrote down this question, why? Why is it that we believe we have to have an answer, a response, some kind of reply to every question. Why is it that you or I think that we have to know why the sky is blue or, or why there are leap years or why the chicken crossed the road? Perhaps, perhaps 
One of the reasons why we want to answer these questions is, is that we believe that we want our world to be orderly, we want it to be meaningful, and we want it to be understandable. I think Isaiah longed to live in a world that was orderly, that was meaningful, and that was understandable. I think that's part of what fed and fueled these poem prayers that we've listened to over the last Sundays of Advent. Remember, Isaiah lived in a time when everything had been turned upside down and inside out. All of the structures had come crumbling down. It wasn't just the physical structures of the walls around Jerusalem or the palace or the temple that was left in ruin and rumble. It was relationships that were left in ruin and rubble as some people were carted off to live in Babylon. It was their understandings of of connections with one another, their, their economic understandings, as well as their whole religious faith came a tumbling down when Babylon came in. I think Isaiah carried questions within his heart. I think those questions fed and fueled his writings that we've listened to over the last several weeks. And if you hold this beautiful poem prayer that Rob just read to us from Isaiah 11, I think there are some beautiful questions woven in there. Questions like, what would the world look like if we lived in harmony, if we set aside our distrust of one another? Questions like, what is God up to creatively in our world that we can collaborate with? Questions like, what if all creation, all creation from the soil beneath our feet to the stars above our heads and everything in between, what if all creation was restored to God's original goodness and blessing? Some of those questions find a response in Isaiah 11 as he prayerfully and poetically offers us a vision. And what I so appreciate about Isaiah is that he doesn't shy away from how far we have to go. Today he draws our attention to a stump, to a tree that has been chopped down and cut off to a stump that appears to be done and dead. After the last 20 plus months of our lives, friends, we know stumps. We've gathered around many of them individually and collectively as a church, as a community, as a country. Isaiah, we know stumps. Isaiah doesn't just leave us there. As we gather around, he he encourages us to lean in, to look, look. There's a shoot, there's a, a sprig sprouting forth. New life where we didn't think there was any life left. What a powerful image on this fourth Sunday of Advent. I, I wonder, where is there new life springing forth? in your life? Where might there be a tiny, vulnerable sprig sprouting forth? Uh, Perhaps a a new volunteer opportunity. Or perhaps uh, a different relationship. Or perhaps some new way of being that your soul is starting to sing out if only, if only you will listen to its guidance. You see, Isaiah offers us the vision. He offers us the destination, the direction in which we're supposed to go. Isaiah offers us the destination, the direction we're supposed to go, and and tells us that God's Spirit will be poured out with understanding and with wisdom. God's Spirit will be poured out upon those who feel lost and lonely and left out and left behind. God's Spirit 
will be poured out on all those who remember God is God and we are not. Isaiah offers us this vision in chapter 11 that no longer, no longer does our life need to be governed by might makes right. No longer is your value based only upon the balance of your bank account or whether you are trending on Twitter. No, there is something greater that God is up to. Isaiah points us toward that destination, toward that direction. And the more you listen to this poem, Prayer of Isaiah 11, I think the more questions it arises. Questions like, how? How in the world do we get to that place, Isaiah? When might we get there? What can I do? What can we do to participate, collaborate, cooperate with God? And why? Why haven't we gotten there like yesterday already? The questions you and I carry this Advent, the questions we carry on this final week before Christmas Eve. And Isaiah doesn't give us some simple to follow directions. He doesn't give us the whole game plan. He simply offers us a place we do guide where we can go. He doesn't tell us necessarily how to get there. And so on this final week before Christmas Eve, I encourage you to carry your questions with you. Carry your questions. I encourage you maybe even to journal them, jot them down, I encourage you to carry your questions. You you might even want to bring them to the Mapping Your Life class that I'm offering in January. Pay attention. Pay attention to the questions you carry with you. And in the midst of the uncertainty, in the midst of the unknownness, it is good to listen to music. Music that can meet us in the messiness of our lives a holy harmony and hum that can reassure us and remind us of God's presence here and now. And so we carry our questions, we hold them as the choir sings to us this glorious anthem that reminds us of God's presence, God's love here and now.
as I wander out under the sky. How Jesus the Savior did come for to die. For poor ornery people like you and like I. I wander as I wander out under the sky.
So with our hearts warmed and souls stirred, please join with me in the spirit of prayer. Thank you, God. Thank you for this powerful music this morning that reminds us to come and worship you, to feel your presence from the top of our heads to our pinky toes. Thank you for our amazing choir, for our music minister, Greg, for our brass, for all those today who help stir the Christmas spirit and awaken us to your presence, O oh God. We give thanks to be together today for this day that you have made, for this season of Christmas and the week before us to continue to prepare our hearts for the hope, peace, joy, and love that can guide us to the stable and on to a new year. We do pray for those who are struggling today and for those who are recovering. We continue to pray for Ed Dupree, Wes Curry, Carl Denny's daughter, Debbie, Jan Wood, Jeannie Kerrigan, Sally Lutz, Betty Smith's sister, Sandra, and brother, George. We pray for those whose hearts are heavy. We give thanks and continue to remember Bob Smith with the flowers today and also Wally Beckstrom. And we hold the family and friends and the Westminster community in our prayers on the passing of Joyce Harmon. We pray for our church, our community, our country, especially our neighbors to the north and the Midwest, still trying to sort through the rubble and ruin after the tornadoes last weekend. We pray for those who will be recipients of our Christmas love offering, that the checks we write might extend, O oh God, your presence. And we give thanks, O oh God, for those sprigs of hope that are springing and sprouting forth from the stumps of our life. Help us pay attention. Help us notice the places and spaces where your still creating voice is singing to us and moving our lives. And so we enter this week, O oh God, with anticipation, with eagerness, and with an openness, O oh God, that we will encounter you every day in the promise of Emmanuel, that you are with us and for us always. Guide us now with that perfect light as we join our voices as one in praying the prayer of Jesus the Christ, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
And so, my friends, this morning we have beheld and beheld by the glory of God's love. Go forth now to share God's love with the whole world and to sing out the joy of which we are preparing our hearts. Our service of worship has ended, and our service with the world now begins. Thanks be to God, and let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.
Thank you.